阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Welcome to our session today.、Uh, good to have Jenny and Auntie Yen's back, and welcome Melinda、uh, to our session.、Uh, my name is Dylan, and I'm、uh, joining the association since twenty、uh, nineteen before COVID. We just started this、uh, youth group. Chat、uh, in 2019, and we have been doing that. And COVID had helped us to be online.、Um, and yeah, we've been having this for almost three years. So yeah, so this is our online session, and、uh, Auntie Yen is the one who broadcast it online and share it with the world. So we have、uh, her to thank,、uh, you know, for making this、uh, more open. But、um, the goal of this session is none other than just introducing cause and effect. So I'm only just reading, you know, off our venerable master Ching Kong. None of them is just my work or anything. All I'm doing is maybe adding more relevance, you know, according to our modern times. If I, if I actually, you know,、uh, say so myself, but、um, you guys will be the judge of it. So today we're gonna go into it、uh, to the session、um, about the cause and effect. So let me share the screen with all of you.、Um, all right. So why is this?、Hmm. All right. There we go. So could you guys see the、um, share screen? Yeah. All right. Thank you. So we have the share screen, and you know, what is treaties on response and retribution? Basically, comma, cause and effect. And、uh, why do we have, you know, cause and effect? Why do we need to know about this? Isn't this some superstition? Isn't this coming out from a, a, a dream or some imagination of someone? But、um, we need to understand everything we do has consequences. The whole point of us talking about, you know, cause and effect on, you know, retribution and response、uh, is because everything we do in our life has a reaction.、Uh, every decision we made, every choice we made. Uh, will you know impact、uh, our path in life, and to know what we did impacting what we will encounter or we already encounter since we were born in this life is very helpful for us to understand, make sense of it.、Uh, ultimately, you know, have a sense of control over your life, although you cannot control directly, but you can contribute to the you know steering. Of your direction in life, so that's basically why we're learning this. It's very,、um, I hope it's very reasonable,、uh, and we do not shy away from you know supernatural elements or anything because, to be honest, there's so much、um, things we do not know as human beings、uh, that is way too foolish to deny everything. As long as everything has sensible, possible, you know,、um, uh, principle behind it. Uh, not coming out of uh, uh, greed or any any ill intention,、um, and and Buddhism is about you know having an understanding of the universe, which is the world around us. You know, as small as your your living room, your environment,、uh, your family, your country, your company, your communities. Those are universe. Those are your universe, and also understanding of yourself. Of how you deal with yourself, how you deal with others,、uh, how you deal with your surroundings. So, karma is very important in doing that. Oh, hi! All right, thank you, Melinda. Oh, so I'll pause and have a read into your stories. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that、um, you have this terrible encounter.、Um, But yeah, I'm I'm glad that you came,、uh, you know, came across、uh, Auntie Yen's website, and、um, we have this conversation.、Uh, feel free to keep typing、uh, if that's what you're comfortable with. 
ask questions as well in the middle of it. Um, uh, the, I will just give you a brief introduction. We are all blessed. <laughs> uh, true, true. But we need to understand why are we blessed, right? You and I, you know, we all of us, we have this connection to this Dharma. Otherwise, you, you and I, all of us, wouldn't be sitting here listening to this um, session today. Uh, and this session is about, you know, cause and effect. And I think I really, really hope that it will help um, us to make sense of what's happening to us. It might not come to us one day or two days, but um, with a, you know, systematic understanding of cause and effect, it helps us to appreciate what we have now and what we can do from now to change our lives. Um, so we have already dwelled deep into there, um, into this session. Do not worry if you miss out the past the sessions because I always have, um, how to say, it's very spontaneous. Yes, it's structured, it need, we need structured, but it's also spontaneous as in it will change according to the situation on life. Um, so whenever you come in from whatever part you are, uh, whatever, uh, how to say, time, timing that you join our session, you will I hope that my hope is that you will be able to get something out of this um, and you know ask questions by all means uh, through here and through Auntie Yenzi uh, contact and through our WhatsApp. So I'll move on to our session today. Uh, structure wise we have already talked about section 3 part 1, part 2, part 3 and part 4. Um, the whole structure of retributions you know karma this book um, is about uh, what is the cost of doing evil doing bad deeds and you know what is the um how to say futility of committing uh, negative karma what is negative karma and what is the futility of doing it understanding that is futile futile in the end you gain nothing out of it in the very end um you're being fooled by your you know the delusion of committing negative acts you know negative deeds then we will understand that there's no point for us to be committing all these negative um, karmas and we will naturally wanting to do good by ourselves by others so it sound, may sound very like you know like um, simple and, and everything but you know this is a foundation even though it's not a Buddhist text based on Buddhist text is based on the Chinese um, Taoist uh, Sutra um, uh, one of them is talking about this book is talking about the um, cause and effect basically and um, what we're learning so far has nothing you know did not depart from anything the Buddha has taught and you know the Chinese Buddhist or you know the Buddhism in China Vietnam and Japan and Korea has been learning Buddhism with the Confucian and Taoist system uh, I'm pretty sure people from that tradition would be aware of it and there's a reason why a lot of um, talented monk uh, monk would attain enlightenment came out from China, from Japan, Korea, from Vietnam, from that area because we have a good foundation in Confucianism and Taoism. And all they're teaching none other than precepts, which is what Buddha thought, precepts. What not to do, you know, that's the first step. And this book that we learn right now is the same thing as what Buddha taught about, the precepts in Abhidharma and in all the, you know, sutras that he taught in the beginning of his teaching stage. So, Understanding that we are learning precepts it was first step towards you know realization of our you know our self realization of our life self empowerment. Uh, we move on to to what we learned so far. Section five is about transgression of deceitful. Last week we talked about um, <clears throat> you know those actions part of this part five. What is fraudulently um, uh, how to say what is being fraudulent. Uh, 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 deceit, the hiding the intention behind the facade. People cannot see your intention, and hence it's called uh, fraudulent or deceitful. In Chinese, it's called rou zi because it appears, you know, um, it does not uh, put itself out there as in, an ill intention. It's something that uh, fester inside our um, ignorance, you know. The jealousy, as you can see from this phrase, desiring others to fail, preventing others from carrying out good deeds. So, I mean, rationally, if you if you're awakened, if you're not, you know, being manipulated by your own um, desires and greed, you know, 
uh, or ignorance of karma, basically, then we will not fall into the trap of being jealous or trying to prevent others because the person who prevent others from doing good will themselves, you know, uh, be denied the good when they need it in life. If you want people to help you, you need to help others. If you want, cause and effect is simple at, at its core. You know, if you want to, you know, have a happy, you know, have a great companion, you have to be uh, love and respected. You need to love and respect others. And the complexity comes in, what if others doesn't do that? What should we do? Stuff like that. Um, but, you know, without going too far, we, we, we understand all these phrases is coming out of, um, we would say, not aware, hence the word ignorance, not aware of these rules. You know? And not aware of these rules only leave us with an option of seeing what we can see, which is very narrow. And through science, we already know our ability to detect sounds and sight. You know, the eyesight is very weak. You know, our five senses is not far reaching. Our thought, as imaginative as it can be, has its limit as well. So we cannot um, know what we do not know if we're not being exposed to it. And so when we are stuck in that cocoon or like little jail that we build up around us, ourselves, it's hard for us to understand anything, any possibility beyond that. Hence, people will do all these kind of you know, things, endanger others just to help yourself, you know, like um, sacrificing others, I mean, benefiting yourself at the expense of others, um, cutting in people, other people's profits so that you can get more, not knowing that if you understand cause and effect, what you get is what you did in the past. What you will receive in the future is what you did in the present, is what you do in the present. Um, and, and, and that is why understanding this and you know, immerse in this teaching and actually go through your life and observe with a peace and calm and rational understanding, then only then we will be aware like, you know, all things that happen to us is a result of our actions in the past. Past can be as far as the beginning of time, which is no beginning, and as the infinity of the future. And, you know, in Buddhism, we talk about there's no actual beginning. And there's no actual point of origin or point of ending. This thing is a, it's a loop that we keep putting ourselves in, like a circle. And you know, Buddha's point is to teach us how to get out of this loop, six realms we call it. So going back to the point here, I'm not going too far into that level. Um, we just want to understand there's no benefit in us harming other people or cutting into other people's profit uh, in an unfair manner. Uh, why do I have to sacrifice my, uh, why do I have to restrain myself? Why do I have to hold myself back? If those people who, you know, exploit the tax, exploit the cheap labors, exploit the other people's kindness uh, can benefit from their deeds, you know, why can't I just live freely like them? And if there is no cause and effect, of course, by all means, what's the point of being so restrictive, holding, upholding the law and anything? We should just go ahead and enjoy our life, doesn't care what happens. The problem is, there is something happening. You can't see it now, but could we reasonably allowing us a chance of it happening to us? Like, you don't believe, but say people might not believe in it, but what are the chances that it does happen, you know, when you pass away? If we can't believe that far, we can also understand in this one life, some people will get their comeuppance quicker, quicker. You know, some people might have to wait until they die. But even in this one life, you can see it quite clearly. Not through one person, maybe through their next generations. You know, someone who did uh, very wealthy and you know, not being uh, dutiful to their uh, family and all that, you can see their family falling apart afterwards. You know, the money that he has so hard to earn in his 80s or 90 years of life, if he's lucky that, to live that long, um, will not pass down long to his children because he didn't educate them well. And then somehow their children has getting worse, worse, worse fate. But you can see the, the aftermath you know, of that, if that's what the level people could accept. So going back to the clause, we, we talk about you know, um, all these evil deeds, the deeds that are not good, deeds that incur karma retribution, incur 
negative karma. Um, and we analyze it. We learn, you know, I know it's a simple sentence, but, you know, if we understand this, put it in real life, in our observation, if we observe more in life, then we will slowly unravel how senseless it is. Hence the Buddha's word, Kalian Mingzha, the un- poor, unfortunate sentient beings who commit negative karma. Yu uh, which is the foolish, because they did, not because he's arrogant, Buddha does not have sense of ego in a sense that we understand it, but he see it as karma, cause and effect point of view. It's like spitting at the air, expecting it to reach anywhere but your face. So you spit into the air only for it to fall in your face. You know, you holding on to a hot coal trying to harm other people without realizing you're already burning your own hands. Those are angers. The other one is gossip, stuff like that. These are metaphors using to say that when we harm other people, we're already starting to harm ourselves with the first person who's getting harmed. So this is how cause and effect works. You know, you can hurt, hurt people uh, 30%, but you will have to get 70% of the re- rebounds back to you. You know, Sangren Chifen, in Chinese there's a saying, you know, you hurt other people 30%, you know, Sangren Sanfen, or Nizuziya Safa Chifen. So there is no shortcuts in the path to get out of this loop. You we need to learn about this and we need to somehow, if sometimes, like me, you can't control your desire or anything, you need to face the consequences. But our hope is we do not want to wait until that day. It's stupid, especially to let ourselves fall into that path. Okay, <clears throat> this is what we learned. And today we are continuing this uh, session on um, to spread the news of another fault or to publish scandal. So this one uh, talks about gossips, talks about, um, you know, uh, manipulating the truth to suit a certain ends. Why would someone spread news of other people's fault and publish scandals? Number one, money. If you work in paparazzi, your, your um, commission is based on the coverage you know, of your news that you have uh, edited, uh, uh, that you have uh, um, taking charge of the case. And if they get more and more attention, you get more and more commission. So greed is a driving factor. What about, um, uh, you know, greed for power? You know, especially in democracy, we have this even more, um, uh, this is the downside of it. There are many good sides, but the downside of it is we use a lot of these gossips and anything to, um, causing other people to, uh, you know, lose trust because we want to get an upper hand in the political uh, race. Or, um, you know, hatred. You know, like, you don't like this person, so you want to find something to bring down their reputation so that they lost respect. Um, you know, crafting some scandal that is not there. So that begs the question, what if they do have that? They did bad deeds, as it says. Like they actually did have scandals. They actually commit scandals, maybe you know, extramarital affairs, which is very common, uh, unfortunately, and um, you know, briberies and stuff. What if they actually did, you know? And 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 is it justified if we spread it? Right. All this thing um, is based on intention. If your intention, you know, working as journalists, especially people in media, is to tell accountable, you know, in the most genuine way, not just putting on the mouth, say, I want to help accountable under behind the scene, you actually, you know, trying to get more money out of that. That is not genuine. But if you seriously want to help, you know, whatever people in charge, in power, accountable, you want to do it in a way that is, you know, as close to the fact as it is. But knowing the real world, how it works, of course, I'm not working in this field, but we can see that this, um, you know, in terms of media, in terms of public, you know, the the uh, mass media, they, they work more towards profits rather than actually um, wanting to write a genuine piece uh, that makes people, you know, reflect on their society. Uh, 
there are good gems in this pile of dirt we call media nowadays. But um, um, I'm pretty sure, you know, the case, this is more of a ordinary, extraordinary, out of the ordinary, uh, such is the situation of our world. Um, in this sentence, he already says that this book was written thousand years ago. So before the TV or anything, uh, you know, um, and since the dawn of time, yep, scam, perfect, Melinda, scam. That's even more, um, even more worse, right? You hurt other people at the expense. You, 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 you do something that is, uh, how to say, uh, cheating, deceitful, and you hurt people's wallet. And not just hurt people's wallet, their psychology is tormented. They were tormented by you, uh, by these people who commit that, sorry. They become tormented by the scammers. Because, you know, maybe they hard earned cash or anything. But if we think carefully, right, now we go going into the, a bit deeper on this. Why would people get scammed in the first place? What caused the scam? What caused the people to fall into scam? What kind of mindset are people have? in order for them to fall into scam. Jenny, uh, Auntie Yenzu, Melinda, feel free to answer. <laughs> I'll take a break. Why would people fall into scam? One of the factors. So what, what, would, what would the scammer use in order to lure these people in, these victims in? Yeah. There you go. You already hit straight to the point, right? Like, yeah, they lure you with money and fame and what drives that urge, the desire for it? Like greed. You want that. You crave for it. You crave attention. You crave for money. I'm not saying that it's, it's um, you know, those people deserve it. It, sh it should not be like that. We should be, you know, doing it the right way. And if you're truly genuine and truly, you know, talented you will find a way to do it right but um this scammer they you know hook those people who are um you know into the you know uh, uh shortcuts most of the time some they were you know taking advantage of the elderly who have no idea what's happening um you know who 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 who, who are not aware of the technology so they're just using um, bank statement, you know, in the name of NAP or some bank, and saying that, oh no, you need to pay up your bill. So they use scare tactics. So I'm not, I'm not referring to those. I'm referring to those people who got, literally got scammed, you know, because they luring them with, you know, with money, with promise of fame, promise of woman, promise of man, you know, the romantics, relationship as well. So all kinds of things. So this makes us think. If I'm, I'm a bit departed from the point, but. It's, it will go, oh you lost all your money oh sorry to hear that um mm, yeah that's right threatening using what matters to you so this kind of deeds it's hurtful towards other people mentally and and you know they can't sleep and all that at night obviously cause and effect you know in the end of the day this person might get their come up, they might get scammed in return. Um, and some people just do it because it's fun. You know, like, um, like gossip, especially. There are people who likes to gossip because excitement, thrill of digging people's secrets. And, 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 you know, it's, if it's too, uh, how to say, if this gets out of control, you might end up, you know, um, having your own secret being dig out as well. And if you're on the other end of that gossip, the feeling will be terrible. So all these things might sound like common sense, but when we're in that scenario, we might get lost in the process. We might be like, you know, get caught up in the moment and forgot the, um, you know, forgot to keep our head cool and, you know, access it real, uh, realistically, keeping our desire at bay. And that takes a lot of effort as if we are, we, if we are full of desires and, you know, we're too um, caught up in it. You know, I myself is no exception as well. I got caught up in 
you know, uh, games and stuff like that, or in, you know, excitement, cheap trials and stuff like that, and costing money and energy and stuff, which, you know, happens. And, and you know, I might go too far from <laughs> from gossips and salacious deeds, but um, every one of us have something that we crave or we that might hook us on. And it's up to us to understand, you know, what, how to see through it, how to let it go, um, how to um, manage it, you know, if anything else, how to, you know, um, direct it in the right place, in the place that is productive or in the place that is harmless in the very least. Um, and one of the very helpful mentality I have learned so far is nothing comes free, nothing comes cheap. Um, shortcuts are the, not the best way to get what you want, to be honest, because if you get it too fast, either the timing is not right, even if it's yours, if it come at a time it's too early for you to appreciate it. Uh, yeah, see, there's another side of the coin. People really want to survive and they have resort to do that. Um, like bagging, stealing, um, you know, committing crimes, selling drugs, uh, vicious cycles. So this is one of those phenomena in life you can see um, that is uh, unfortunate in our world. So, but in our current context is what we can do to ourselves, for ourselves, what we can control is we, we, we should not allow it, um, uh, we should manage it properly. And if we can't manage it properly, the consequence is we lose um, our money, our reputations, our um, peace of mind, right? And, and you know, it might end up being, uh, let's say, worse to us. Sometimes if we get something we want too early, we like I say, we can't appreciate it. Like, you know, too early, we can't appreciate it. Too late, we are, don't have the energy to appreciate it. So it came in just the right time if you are meant to have it. Um, and to have desire as part of being human and to live. Having said that, we manage it properly. We understand that everything has its own time. Everything has its own place. And all we need to do is put ourselves on the right path, cultivate the right course that will lead to the right effect. Knowing that nothing comes in cheap, right? nothing comes, nothing is free in, in, in its truest sense of the word. Like, why would your parents treat you well? Why would this person treat you well? If you understand cause and effect beyond just this one lifespan, not less than 100 years, then you understand in past life, you treat them well. And this life, they treat you well. And so if you want this to go into a better direction, do the work in the present. Now is the best time because you're still breathing. You can still change it. Um, to get to this realization, it takes effort. It takes reflection. It also takes day-to-day -day action, right? Not just thinking, 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 because I, I was in there and I'm still is at some point keep thinking, but I keep telling myself, what have I done to get there? Nothing. So why am I expecting to get anything out of this empty empty mindset? I mean, empty dreams, if I'm not doing anything to contribute to it. And another word I'd really like to know is in Chinese say only concerned about the planting, the you know, the the seed sowing. Do not concern about the harvest. Because when it's time, it will just appear, you know, your seeds that you planted, the water that you did every day. You only need to focus about planting on the seeds, on the right ground, fertilize, uh, fertilize it constantly, water it constantly, keep that little bit of effort every day. And eventually, it will lead you to the fruition. You know, it will come to fruition. It may be this life, maybe next life. Depends on the condition and also your intensity. So those things is doable. You know, you can still can get what you want. You know, in non Buddhism is not saying that you can't get what you want. You need to hide in the mountain and not do anything. That is a way to attain enlightenment. They also want to gain enlightenment in a sense. And then when they realize, I'll, I'll get to you, um, um, Belinda. When when you realize that it, you, if you 
want to gain enlightenment, you cannot gain enlightenment. So they realize that they need a lack of the want to gain enlightenment. So going back to your questions, which is more practical, how do you know you can plant the seeds, correct seeds? First thing, knowing that um, the cause and effect, how it works. Cause effect does not just work. It has to have condition. Just like you and me, all of us as human, in order to survive, in order to exist in this world as a, in this form, we need to have air, we need to have sun, we need to have food, which is plantations and stuff like that. And all these are conditioned. It has to be just right. Too much, you know, you die. Too little, you die. And then the cost, if we talk about just biological, of course, your parents, right? That's the cost. But if you talk about karmically, why are you human? Five precepts. Holding five precepts. You know, in the past, uh, you hold five precepts well. In your passable mark, you do not kill, you do not... Uh, still, you do not have sexual misconduct, which is extramarital affair. Uh, you do not have, uh, you do not lie, and that includes lying, harsh words, you know, swearing, um, which I'm guilty of a lot sometimes. Uh, harsh words, uh, uh, lying, uh, double, um, double liang se, liang se. How does how do you say liang se? This is the this is this is that liang se. Yeah, this is the um. Picking, you know, picking people apart. You know, divisive words. Yes, sorry, divisive words. This is what we're talking about. One of the precepts it breaches is divisive words, and uh, no lying, no divisive words, no um, untruthful words, which is flowery language, but no substance. You know, used to deceive people, like say deceive a young, uh, deceive other people. You know, for for your own gain gain you know romantic favors or to gain money to gain uh, fame you know uh, stuff like that so and last one is no intoxicants you know that prevents you to commit the four first four precepts sorry i'm too technical on that but um if we go really detail yes you know that's how you become human so now you talk about you know say money health of yourself and family uh you know be wise so that you don't fall into scam those things have have to have a cause in uh, and condition or you for you to fall into this right the cause might be the greed you know we greed and then we allowed people to lure us with that string that we attach to you know they know that you like money so they use money to lure you jackpot uh, you know uh, all these sort of um things so those are the cause the condition is just they are just condition we already have the cause so we 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 only need the right condition for us to lure into this direction. So what about the right direction? We all want a, a good outcome. We don't want a terrible outcome. So um, we have a lot of cause in us. We call it alaya consciousness. That's our, not too technical, that's our you know subconscious. We call it subconscious. It's much easier to understand. Um, thank goodness for this in modern times. Um, and, and these subconsciousness have a lot of seeds, which is the actions that we did in the past. And right now, what you face in daily life is the condition. And, and what kind of treatment you receive is the effect, right? And the effect will also be the cost um, if we, um, how to say, if we continue to act. Say, you receive a good job, you, know, you receive a good salary, you have a good life. So that's in the, in the past, you have practiced giving giving wealth to other people, giving uh, help, food, shelter. So now you have good shelter, good food, good salary, good stuff. You know, your life is good. That's because you cultivate giving in the past. And the condition is the salary. Maybe a good job, maybe someone who knows, you know, introduced you to a good uh, boss and then you have in a good care of in a workplace. And then the effect is, you know, all the enjoyment you have. So you want to have that mindset in your mind, everything you receive now is the past, is the consequences of your past action. And and these are just the condition. So knowing that, what about future? You know, where do I go from here? Um, one way to think about is what do I want out of this life? You know, if I want to be very wealthy, then practice giving, practice sharing, practice, you know, 
really practice that. And the more sincere you are, the less you ask the result, the better the result is. This is very paradoxical, but this is how it works. The more you say, when am I getting my, you know, one first million dollars and when can I get that? The more you think about that, the smaller, put it the other way, the smaller the land you can plot on. Because your mind can only think about yourself, your own benefit. The less you think about yourself, the more you think about others, you know, how to feed people, how to help people, then the more uh, fruit that, or crops you will receive so to speak. So this is how it works. Understand how it works logically in this level and then you put it in practice where everything is engaged, your emotions, your perceptions and everything is where the real test comes into. Where the failure comes in, I would have assure you it will be failure. And then you need to understand why do I fail? Why is this not working? You know, Some people might resort to blaming the gods, blaming the Buddha, blaming their parents, blaming the school, blaming the system, blaming the governments. Yes, some some of this factor might contribute to this. Maybe the government not giving enough, that's, that's this. Yes, we have a system, blah, blah, blah. Those are not the cause. Those are conditions. What is the cause? We have to ask ourselves. Right? So this is one way. What do you want? And second thing is, what do you do not? What do you not want in your life? You don't want a terrible partner. Don't want to live with a terrible partner where it treats you bad, do not care about family, or you know, cheats on you. Um, very good. Education, parents, you know, you, you want to, you know, you want to have a society where everyone is truthful, where everyone is genuine and and, and peaceful and not uh, liking to argue and like like to fight and all that. You want a you want a good job. I mean, you don't want um. You don't want to encounter people who are mean and stuff like that. So ask ourselves, have we done the same thing to others? If if we do, then we received the treatment that we give other people. So it's very simple, it sounds like. It is simple, but, you know, sometimes we lost it. We lost this sight of it, and then we lost that uh, understanding. And then we, and then when we receive our the treatment, the medicine, our own medicine, uh, you know, the, the karma of our action, then we realize, oh God, that's why it happened to me. Now I did not do it this life, but past life I might have. So we need to start to work on ourselves, you know, repent and work on this. So this session we learn now is helping us to understand what not to do. You know, this whole chapter takes seventy percent of the book. You know, section three, the uh, transgression, which is the deeds that will cause negative karma. Um, in the interest of time, we'll, we'll keep moving. Thanks for sharing, uh, Melinda and everyone. Um, now, to waste and recklessly spend money and resource belonging to others. That to cause infighting and disharmony amongst others' family members. Yeah, waste and, you know, like the money resources, it's share, right? In company, in, in, in society, you know, like t t tissues, you know. There was a story about a, a very, very respected monk, Guangqian Lao Hesang. Uh, apologies for the sound. Uh, it's Guangqian Lao Hesang, I think. I think one of the venerated monk in China. Uh, he has a very good habit. Every time he eats, when people give him tissues, he never use, you know, more than one ply at once. He always take one ply, use it on one side, and then fold it. The clean, you know, fold it, fold out, fold in the dirty side and leave out the clean side to wipe again next time. And when he finished wiping that first half, first, uh, I mean, front page of the ply, the tissue ply, he, you know, fold it and leave the clean one and put it in his pocket. So he never wasted any resources that he was given. The tissue paper he uses, oh, now you can see it from the way he treats the resources he was given, like tissue, something as small and for us might be inconsequential. You know, no one's going to hold you accountable for using a lot of tissues. Um, but that is what um, creates merit. Your merit, not others. Your merit. And we save up, you know. That is for yourself. Remember that. Do not mistaken of being stingy. That's different. Stingy is towards others. You need to be generous towards others. You need to be more um, frugal 
to yourself. That's the right way of doing things. Why is it the right way? Because why, what, what do we define right? The outcome. The outcome that we, we desire you know, is, is to have lacking or not lacking of want. You know, what we eat, what we sleep, what we um, shelter ourselves with, we do not wish to lack of this. You know, what we want to eat, we get it. What we want, uh, enough money to spend, enough uh, uh, good place to live in. So to do that, you need to start saving up, saving up your own merits, you know, beyond just money. You know, people just keep thinking, some people might think merit equals money, but that's, it's just like, it's like saying, uh, you know, Australia is the only place on earth. That's wrong, right? There's, there's a whole wide world out there. Um, sorry for the bad analogy, but um, yeah. So, so um, the way you treat your goods as well, say if you can use these items for five years, but because of careless, reckless use, you have reduced the lifespan to three years. That's another form of harming your own fortune. Uh, recklessly spend the resources. In this case, it's even worse. Those resources are not for your own use. It's to share it. Maybe a public toilet or public... Um, sorry, keep thinking about toilet. I just had a lot of drink. Sorry. Um, public um, amenities or maybe in company the papers the stationaries something small like this or tax revenue you know um, public pro infrastructure projects people that pull in the money um, for you to you know benefit the society building some beneficial projects for everyone and we waste it on something useless just because we want to one up our political opponent or something like that, or we just want to show face, yeah, something like that. That's that's another transgression. And yeah, to cause infighting and disharmony among others and family members. This is one of the um, karma of divisive words, uh, which means you know it will end up you know you in that position. If we cause other people to fight amongst each other to have disharmony, uh, especially among close people then the karma would be you will met some partners or and, 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 and you will be in a situation where you are always in you know constant state of chaos chaos and the, and you know infighting. It's just that simple. And um, and it's not fun, right? It's tiring. You keep dragging in ten different directions. Another implication of this word can be used in Buddhist context is to break up the Sangha. One of the precepts talk about we have the three um, severe, you know, there are three, I think. There are three, I think, three or five, I forgot. There are three or five very heinous crimes, you know, that is and almost unfor very unforgivable. Uh, one of them is uh, break up a harmonious sangha. Uh, very famous. Breaking up a harmonious sangha means you're breaking up a chance of people to really gain enlightenment. Hence, able to um, help a lot of people. Basically, you denied many, 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 many generations of people from gaining the benefits of this one person's enlightenment. That is a serious, heinous crime because you need to repay every single, not just one universe, many universe of people, or not just people, beings, all beings. That's, that, that's why you do not break up a Sangha. Master Ching Gong has given a very humorous um, humorous um, way of saying it. Um, someone say, oh, what if I break up a Sangha? I feel very sad, uh, very um, bad and fear uh, of the karma. And Master Ching Kong say, do you see any harmonious Sangha exist in this world right now? To form a Sangha, you need to have more than four people, four people at least. And four of them need to fulfill the six harmonious deeds. Harmonious um, deeds. Number one is to have the same goal in mind. You know, whatever they do, they have the same goal in mind. That means to form an organization, you need to have share the same vision. That's what we, 
That's how we understand it. Uh, that's number one. If without that one, you can't even form a Sangha or any organization, not just Sangha. That is already hard to find. And then the rest is, you know, sharing the profits or sharing whatever resources they have. Uh, holding on to the same precepts means following the same rule, same law. Uh, you know, we if we move it up, it makes it really makes sense. You know, Buddha Dhamma really is everywhere. You can put in any era, any civilization. It just works. Um, and then you can have the Jian He Tong Jie, Jie He Tong Xiu, Li He Tong Jun. Uh, this is just what I mentioned in English just now. Um, the other three I forgot. But um, basically, you need to share the same um, mindset. And it can be different, but you need to uh, work towards the same goal. So we don't really see that a lot nowadays. Um, so don't worry, Master Chung Se. However, if you do encounter that and you break it up, the effect is too serious. Um, there's a special, literally, hell for that. We're talking about cause and effect. We cannot just escape from this term, hell. And, and there are many kinds of hell. And the special kind of hell is called Avicii hell. And Avicii hell means, in, in, in Sanskrit, in English, it means uh, wu, wu jian, non, non-stop. The suffering is non-stop. Because the generic hell is, there's a pause. Not for coffee break, sorry. But there's a pause of the suffering. In in, 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 a, in a patch and patch, but if you read the sutra, Siddhi Garpa Sutra, Di Zhang Jing, it will tell you how it works. You know, all this came out from our mind. That's why we try to learn this because this thing will create our own hell. Because basically, what what we learn from Buddhism is we create our own hell, literally, not just psychologically or or whatever. You you're in your own personal hell. That's true. Um, um, we need to learn the theory behind this, you know, appearance. What's the point of learning this? It's to understand that, you know, you may not, we may not, you know, see this thing happening, but we already might experiencing the unpleasantness of it. And you exaggerate this unpleasantness, it becomes hell. And the cause of hell, or cause of heaven, cause of pure land, is in our heart. And hence, if we work, on ourselves and learn about this, you know, take your time, let it absorb, let it make sense, you know, don't rush it, don't rush the sentence, let it be your action, your thought, your speech, let it be an invisible but powerful break in your life and reserving you the energy for you to channel into the positive side, right? These are not meant to scare you, not meant to say, you know, you will do this and ho-ho. But it's true. Consequences, if you lay back in front of you, you'll be scared. Consequences of having drugs. If you look at that life, the whole cycle of the person who's stuck with drugs, you will be scared. Or, you know, people who um, do not control their sexual uh, conduct, you know, STDs, HIVs, those are cause and effect of too much of these actions. Uh, broke up families, you know, broken families, too many steps, and then too many um, t- unbalanced, you know, all these things, you know, it makes you understand why this society is the way it is. But always remember, these are wisdom, right? You, if you gain that level of insight, but you also need to be compassionate. You need to understand they got stuck in there. Especially people got stuck in that mindset. They cannot, they cannot jump out of it. They thought it's correct. They thought what is not correct as correct. That means they They swap around the cause and effect, or they deny the cause and effect. And cause and effect is not a thing. It's just simply like saying you are here on the ground instead of flying on the air because there's a gravity. It's just that okay. Don't. Don't label anything on it. It's just how it is. You know, doesn't matter. You believe in it, don't believe in it. You need to follow the law of gravity if you're in the orbit of the Earth. Same thing. If you're in six realms, cause and effect. No, not just six realms, but cause and effect is how it works. And 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 just the term we use, we use karma. And the, um and yeah, so here is one of the um negative deeds. 
So last one before I um, finish this, because we have set eight minutes. To seize or confiscate what is dear to others, to aid and abate the outrageous conduct of other people. So basically, you're just stealing what what people loves, you know, and maybe yeah, cheat on other people's partners. Very famous, you know, like you know, you like this person and that they they also drawn to you, but they already have partners, they already have um boyfriends, girlfriends, or engaged and fiancés or you know, husband and wife, at uh, their moment of weakness, vulnerability, you go in there. Also, you know, can be stealing someone's favorite stuff, you know, like their, their um, favorite toys or favorite um, stuff that you, you stole from them, you know. It's quite straightforward, right? You don't want what you like or you don't want your stuff to be taken away. So you do not do this to other people. But like I say, when real situation comes and you it presents before you, asking you, are you see are you able to hold yourself? Then that's when we were tested. You know, whether you actually understand this teaching, understand the consequences. Not just understand, that's not enough, guys. You need to feel the consequences. Really feel it. Like as if as if if I put you in a position where I'm hanging a bag of fifty million in front of you over the cliff. But the consequences is you need to jump over this 50 meters deep crevice. Would you do it? It's real, very real. The consequence is very real. But more often, if you look from a Buddha's point of view or the sage point of view, a lot of people do not see the cliff or unknowingly un ignoring it. They saw it, but they use a lot of delusional imagination saying the cliff is not there. And they all jump towards the the a bag of money hanging on the trees 50 meters apart so the consequence is they fall you know there's a right way to do it you can you know build up letters and stuff like that and then you share sorry metaphor so back to the point right like if you know you really feel that danger that consequences you will naturally stop but that takes insight perception you need to be perceptive of your life i'm not saying overthinking guys you can think but don't overthink and even if you're thinking buddha has a right thinking um, you need to you need to uh, you need to conduct your logical understanding correctly you know based on the principle laid out by the buddha dharma and it helps you to walk to feel it so you have that you know gps you know, on the map, a GPS tells you to go to, say, if you're in the States, maybe you go to, you know, LA, uh, sorry, acting class, LA, all right? And then you'll be like driving, but you only know LA as in a word. You don't know what it is. You don't know what it feels like there, the environment, the vibe. You only have the map going there. Now you need to drive. Now that's when the real problem, real things come in. The petrol, the weather, food, Accommodation. If you drive all the way from the where, where Auntie is, the Arizona, Arizona is it? All the way up to LA, which is like hours and hours of drive, or from Sydney all the way to um, Melbourne, takes 13 hours. That's when you need to really see what you lack to get there. Same goes for us towards Pure Land. There's so much things we need to work on, you know. None other than, but if you crystallize it, it will become. We need faith real faith in our own Buddha nature, that's number one. And then we have faith in Buddha's vow. He's real about his vow. He's not funny. He's not playing around. He is serious about getting us there. He already is. It's just we need to take it. And we need to stay with him throughout this 13-hour course from Sydney to Melbourne or from Arizona, Phoenix to LA, you know, California. Is LA part of California? Anyway, right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, And... And yeah, there we go. So here, it's just telling us what not to do. The other one is to aid and obey the outrageous conduct of other people. Yeah. And there's a law against, you know, abating felonies or crimes. Um, or, you know, pranking. Harmless pranking is fine, but you know, if you do something that is um, encouraging them, you know, maybe take drugs or drink alcohol or saying harsh words, you know, 
and you 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 incite that in, in incite that sort of disharmony you know helping them to do that and obviously in the future maybe you have your son you have a son and daughter and then they do the same thing someone will come into their life causing you inharmonious you know someone will come into their life doing those things to other people so do good so that you can leave good stuff not just to yourself but to your loved ones you know be genuine be sincere and always remember what do I want to leave to my my next generation if anything else what do I want to leave to the people I care about my my siblings my my next generations you know my students my, my organization my world you know? and if you want to leave behind a good world a, a, a better world you know or in the very least a better environment a better uh, society start with your own family you know if you live uh, if you're really good in that community people recognize it people felt it they will take care of your next generation as well i'm saying the very most human you know experience that you can think about you want your own children to be in a good path you know to be taken care of so you do the same thing and then you if you're a monk or if you're in this you know not taking that path you still need to take care of the communities and you need to be sincere and genuine about it so anything here mentioned here is just what not to do that's it and um we'll get into it you know um, as we go so that's it time's up thank you guys uh thank you for coming uh tian zi jenny uh melinda um nice to meet you first day thank you for sharing sorry to hear about what happened to you um i hope that you know we have this you know talk more you can use chat feel free to do that um we're just following the book you know and then if you have a chance you know go to our website uh which will until we share it to you uh uh and you know read up uh what we have shared there it helps uh, jenny is our manager of our website um she will be sharing the uh, blog post from the venerables time to time uh this is called amtv nsw which is where we are in australia so uh we'll continue this three weeks after that would be the 10th of april uh, so see you guys until then all right uh, thank you it's okay yeah take your time yeah definitely um any questions you know <clears throat> ask um and then we'll get back to you um when we have our next session uh, or just being here and sharing this is always this is what it's all about so it helps me uh helps you helps everyone um uh, like i said the mindset is i'm not the teacher i'm not teaching anyone all i'm doing is sharing my world my universe what what my perception is and hopefully we can find common ground in here your universe and my universe will be different but we will have common ground as well and we all have buddha nature but what we manifest from buddha nature is different because we have a different cost different past and hence our effect will not be the same so if you understand this nothing in the world is unfair it's truly equal and understand this that's why we need to chant our mito for to go to pure land because we all create the same karma karma works everywhere you right we create the same karma the pure karma to go to pure land all right so we'll finish this by dedicating our merit after we chant 10 times amito for sorry i didn't give you guys a chance to talk a bit but um just want to wrap up this session um and then we'll come back with a new part subject sub sub chapter a mi to fo 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 a
弥陀佛。May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart and understanding and compassion, and leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Namo Amitofo. Thank you guys. Um, have a good night. Uh, if you like to join our WhatsApp, uh, Melinda, you can share um, the um, number to Andy by uh, message, and I will add you to the WhatsApp. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Melinda. Good night. Yeah.